We've got baby goats. We have to say Oreo. It's probably the new herd billy right there. I've got him excluded. He was being a bully. There's another baby goat. Oreo was born last night. That one was born two days ago. It was a set of twins with that other white one back there. This little cream colored one was born last night. So we've got one more girl back there. The one's looking how to escape. I bet she has a set of twins. So I've got them water, a couple water sources. I've got them a hay manger. It's a little higher, but it was made for the horse. I've got protein feeders. It's an old hog barn. Around the walls, I have hay and straw piled up to block any wind. I've got high quality root grass hay here they can munch on. I moved them all in the barn to try to keep them warmer and to also give these babies a chance to catch mom to nurse. Um, so I'm giving them free choice feed now since all of them except one has uh, partuated they've all kitted except the one and right now they need a lot of feed to be able to feed these babies so gestation doesn't require much more than above normal um, feed but when they're during lactation they need a lot of feed almost double baby goats are pretty cool Hey, like and subscribe, everybody. Oreo out. These are the two freshest ones of the herd. They were born this morning. Yeah, we're following. All right, welcome to the farm today. Got my new hat, Farm Credit Mid South. About to do some business with them. So today, we're gonna ear tag, get you situated. So, I'm gonna ear tag my goats. All right, so this is how I ear, this is why, how, whatever, my explanation of ear tagging. Okay, so these two digits right here, the 19, that is the year that goat was born. So this goat was born last, uh, well, I guess two years ago now. She's one of my breeders, uh, but she lost her, um, she actually lost a full ear with the ear tag in it. And she was number four, okay? And I put a G at the bottom. Sometimes I put a G on the back. This for gander, just because. So all my goats will have the first two digits will be the year they were born. That way I know how old they are. Uh, so I can rotate them out of my herd. There's Sam. Hey, Sam. And um, then having a three-digit number like that, I'm not saying it helps, but it might give you an advantage at a cell barn to think those goats are coming from a larger herd. Um, so I'm gonna ear tag all my females. I'm gonna ear tag the two males I kept as breeders and I'm gonna not ear tag the rest. I'm gonna trim some hooves today. So I didn't get them all tagged today. I didn't figure I would. I figured I'm going to spice this over a week or so um, just to keep them calm. I mean, I could catch them all I have in the past when I didn't know as much. I could shove them all in the corner and, and catch them one at a time. and They get all excited, and then you have the risk of them hurting themselves. So I, I'm not going to do that. I can just wait. I'm in no rush. I'm starting this early. Um, so there's a lot of waiting there just trying to catch them off guard trying to catch them calm, get them used to me. I don't spend enough time out here. If you want really calm animals, you need to spend time in the barn with them. You need to spend time when you're feeding them with a bucket. Um, I don't have that kind of time, so I'm not I'm not even gonna kid myself that I'm gonna have tame goats. That's fine, they're tame enough. So I did wanna show you, if you watch me pulling their feet up, I have the foot rot shears. So goats and sheep, you have to trim their hooves pretty frequently. Um, beef cattle, not as much, but goats and sheep on a feed like this, 
um, you do have to trim them um, pretty often. That one, um, that biggest one that gave me a fit, she uh, she was in bad shape. I should have done should have done her quicker. Uh, the old black headed one with one ear, uh, got all but one of her feet. Feet I had to go back, and of course I put her ear tag in backwards like a rookie. Um, but she just she's nuts. I mean she has a half a horn. Um, she's one had her head hung in the fence, and the dog ripped her ear off with the ear tag. And she gets her head hung like once a week. So she's just, she's not right. I should cull her for sure. Um, I was thinking about keeping a little Oreo there. Her, um, she had a buck kid this year. But I think I may call him too because he, he's pretty spooky and he has no reason. He's never been handled. Um, so he has no reason to be spooky at all. Um, I might need to show you these. Oh, they're in my back pocket. So these are the ear taggers I use. So I, that's too big of an ear tag. This is a cattle ear tag, but I'm legally blind without my contacts. So um, I want a big ear tag. So the button goes on right here. It looks like in all the, all the fun I've lost the button. So that just pierces through the ear like an okay. earring. Um, and it just gives them a piece of jewelry there, um, that button and ear tag, and you can identify them better. So yes, they, most of them are different colors, um, but for my record keeping, it's a lot easier to write down a number and keep up with that. Also write down a number in somewhat of the color um, in case they lose the ear tag, like old crazy black-headed one there. Um, so I may, uh, I'll come back every day and when I have time and see if I can get that rounded out and get a, get a good count of how many males and females I have in this little, in this little herd I here, have here in this barn. So keep following along. All right, so I guess I'll end this video this is the next day after I did the time lapse. Um, so got pretty much all of them ear tagged, their hooves trimmed, got them back, sitting level. Very important to take care of their foot health. Um, so you can see they're all eating grain. That's a TMR ration, total mix ration. I've got hay and cottonseed, all kinds of stuff in there. If you look at my video of grinding feed for uh, cattle and goats, that's the same, same ration. They're eating it great. Uh, doing a fine job on it. Um, it's really helping those does to lactate and produce milk for those little ones. I thought you might want to see how this barn is set up if I hadn't already showed you. So this is a, an old, very old barn. This barn was originally built, so those timbers right there, originally built in 1926. And my dad and my grandpa and my uncle, um, they tore, they built this new part. This is all new. Everything's new. They saved the old posts and old beams right there. They built it in uh, 1988 um, and built the, the new barn underneath the old barn and tore the old barn off of it, if that makes sense. Um, so this was old hog barn. That's what my grandpa used it for. Um, this is where they put pigs before they loaded them and just back and forth. That's where they would breed some hogs in this, in this one. Um, but it just didn't keep a lot of pigs in the barn all the time so you can see it's just been manufactured over time that old green spot right there that board and that board's where i used to have self feeders i would dump in from the inside um i've got a gate back there it wasn't tall enough for the goats so we stacked up some pallets yeah i know it doesn't look all that great here's one of our old hay mangers from horses so i got a divider gate right here and i can work them into uh, well we work the hogs into this chute right here so that's a catch-all head gate um, and now I still use that for goats some. Mainly I just use that as a crowding pin. I can swing that long gate open um, and pin it right there and I can work them in and work small groups. Um, I added this um, walkthrough gate here uh, when I was in college, when I was feeding calves and hogs, just to make it more convenient. Um, so this didn't used to have anything in front of it. They'd back the hog trailer right up here. As you can see our little operation, that's gonna be my commodity wagon right there possibly you can see the farm truck wheels greenhouse the old woodshed so this is one half of the barn other half of the barn we store um junk tires and that's where the horse stays you can see the horse so we picked up that um hitching post from my wife's grandparents so you can see i have the panels that we welded an ag back when i was in school that's around there goes sam and this right here is the old hog house that the goats stay in. Works great. Um, this pasture is um, an eighth of an acre. 
this little feedlot's an eighth of an acre. Um, it is planted in wheat right now. It was in Bermuda grass and crab grass this year. And it's got six strands of high tensile wire going around it, electrified high tensile. So we build these latches. I don't know if anybody else has ever used or built latches like that, but we build all of our own gate latches because we don't like buying them. And yes, I do weigh my feed every day on these old cotton scales. My grandparents used to pick cotton, raise cotton, and they use those scales. So that's kind of a, a memento. There's old tractor. Keep my feed in the feed wagon right there. Um, that plywood box is our horse tack. And we have some other stuff here that's just odd in the ends. This is how we store our horse feed and then the barn cat feed. Built that when I was in college. I started doing a lot of work out here when I was in college when I was feeding calves and uh, feeding hogs. And that's how we keep the coons from getting into our, our feed. It works great. These barrels, we got several of these around the farm. I have extra horse feed in that. It just keeps the, keeps the coons and the possums honest. As you can see here, this wagon, it, if you watched in my other video of us grinding feed, this is the wagon I dumped that into. It's just open. Um, I might build a box over it in the future, but for now, it's just going to be open. Um, I'm not worried about the coons and possums eating a whole lot. I'm more worried about them defecating in it. And then there's a little bit of hay I have left. Uh, we had to add this, the back of the barn, I don't know, several years ago um, because it, it fell through. So that's that's our little farm tour, the goat operation. Um, this other paddock right here, feedlot, um, it's got a lot more brush in it for the goats. It's another eighth of an acre. It comes off the back of the barn um, and it has uh, woven wire. So it's all field fenced with electric fence, 18 inches up and another one up high for the horse. So that's, here's the horse. Here's old pistol, old happy pistol. That's my wife's Kentucky Rocky Mountain horse. Pretty good horse. Well, that's our little farming operation. The other, I got a three acre uh, paddock or pasture out there um, that's also removed grass and crabgrass that, that we're clearing up. That's where I'll move most everything in the summertime. Um, in the wintertime, I like to move everything up to the barn. That way I can catch it easier and work it easier, especially when they're kidding, um, when they're having little ones. So I hope you enjoyed this short little video here. This is the next day after the time lapse. I don't know if I've said that yet, but uh, I got everything tagged. I got everything hooves trimmed on the older goats, on the older does and, and the billy. I may cull that Billy, I'm not sure. He's a little short for my taste. Um, so that's that. I enjoyed having you along. And um, please like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. Those notifications will let you know when I'm posting a video and um, get you on the channel. So with that, keep making every toe push. Have a good one.